Um, like during the congressional hearing, Sally Kornbluth, our president, was the only one to mention the term Palestinian. And that's not because she all of a sudden had like this moral epiphany that just, the Palestinians are humans too, and Islamophobia is a real issue, and anti-Arab harassment is a real issue. But it's because we like showed her through our actions, through our conversations with her, and through the strength of our coalition, because that if she didn't make some type of change and shift her in her messaging, then she would be on the complete she would be in the minority on campus. Like she would, she would not be with the majority of that MIT community. Free speech was not guaranteed. It was only won through the power of our organization. I think that our number one goal in this work isn't that we think that Palestine will be free overnight, but to develop the leadership and develop the strength and the confidence to actually, yeah, because we won't win until we have organization. We won't win until there's millions and millions of people on the street in the U.S. willing to put their neck out and really to take the risk and like build the organization to actually fight meaningfully against the U.S. war machine. There's an intentional effort to conflate criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism so that it can be shut down under the guise of hate speech. If someone criticizes Israel and they're Black, they're going to receive racist uh, harassment. If they criticize Israel and they're Jewish, they receive anti-Semitic harassment. If they criticize Israel and they're Muslim, they have Islamophobic harassment. So two things that are really notable in this pattern is that one, it's only in response to criticism of Israel. And two, it's the same group of perpetrators who are harassing all types of students on campus. I'm an American. I was born and raised here. And I experience less pushback less criticism and less harassment criticizing my own country than criticizing Israel, living in America and doing this within the US, which I think is really shocking because this is a foreign nation. This is not my own country. Um, there's been no similar response in um, when you go to criticism of Saudi Arabia, China, Russia, or any other countries. Um, they've been using this opportunity to increase and to inflame their suppression and harassment of other student groups on campus for their criticism of Israel. So it really is a it was a it was a guise of um of of something that was really just more of a political opportunity for the Congress people that were involved. Okul yönetimi daha İsrail yanlısı bir tutum sergilemesine rağmen öğrenciler şu anda bu konuda kendi sözlerini söyleyebiliyorlar. Biz iki hafta önce rektörü, e, üniversite başkanını, prezidentini eleştiriyorduk. Çünkü çok yaptığı duyurularda, açıklamalarda e, İsrail yanlısı bir tutum sergilediğini düşünüyoruz. Hala düşünüyoruz. Ve de Filistinlerle ilgili yapılan açıklamalarda Filistin'i çok fazla Filistin'i destekleyenlerin çok fazla eleştirildiğini görüyoruz. Ve biz bu konudan dolayı buradaki rektörümüzün yaptığı açıklamalardan memnun değildik. Ama Buna rağmen dışarıdan öyle bir baskı aldı ki yeteri kadar İsrail yanlısı olmadığı için biz şu anda rektörü savunur pozisyona gelmek zorunda kaldık. Çünkü rektörün istifası istendiğinde buna karşı çıkmaya başladık. Bu çok trajik komik bir şey. Yani herkesin özgürlükler ülkesi dediğimiz bir yerde bir ekmek parası için, bir iş bulabilmek için aslında sesini kısman gerektiği fakülte seviyesinde, öğrenci seviyesinde, her seviyesinde bilinen bir şey. Şu anda hala Amerika'nın yönetimi, Biden yönetimi lobilere daha çok önem verse de alttan gelen tepkiyi uzun soluklu bir hayatta tepkisiz kalamayacağını düşünüyorum.